over how to create a scatter plot and align it best fit using Desmos. Uh, so the, web the website desmos.com is an awesome graphing calculator and it's got a ton of features, probably more than on the standard TI-84 calculator, uh, but it can be a little complicated in using it if you haven't done it before. So for those of you that have done it before, think of this as just a reminder on how you can achieve this. So what I'd like to do is I wanna create a table and then fill in some values of data and then show how to create a line of best fit for that. So I first wanna click the addition sign in the upper left corner over here and then I'm gonna add a table in. And I'm just gonna add in some X and Y values. Let's go up to 10 and then some random points here. Uh, let's make that one like 22.4 and 28. And let's go with like, I don't know, 47.2. Okay, so this is a scatter plot that I've created. And if I zoom out, there are my points. They're kind of a bit of a cluster to them. It's a little hard to see them. So the way that you would, I recommend that you uh, shrink the window down is by clicking the settings icon in the upper right corner and then adjusting the scale. So my X axis, I have no values less than zero. So I'm gonna go to like negative two to just make it a little bit smaller. And the greatest X value I have is 10. So I'm gonna change that to 12. And then my Y axis, uh, my lowest value, I, I can leave it at like negative 10. I just wanna have some values below mine and a little bit above so that I have a nice picture here. The largest value I have is 47. So I may go up to 50 on my Y axis. And now that I have it there, uh, I've got my scatter plot shown and the points are really easy to see. I may turn into projector mode so that it's a little more pronounced. But here's my scatter plot, and now I'm going to try to create a line of best fit that will model this data. And what you do here is you either add a new expression, or you can just click down in the cell below. And that's what I'm going to do. Now I want to model the data above, so I'm going to begin creating a linear equation, and I would normally type like y equals mx plus b. But there's going to be some changes to this. I want to call it y1, so it reflects the, the data in this table here, or this thing here and uh oh it deleted it let's try that again uh, let's erase my equation I'm gonna go y1 is equal to mx1 plus b I actually want to change this I don't want to make it equals I want to have a little approximate sign and I'll achieve that by clicking the keyboard tool the ABC button and then this here now that formula that's added in created a line of best fit now I want to highlight some of the key variables down below um, M represents the slope of my line. It's 2.88, which means it's, it's a positive line. Uh, the B is the y-intercept occurring at 18.79. Uh, the R value, the correlation coefficient, which measures the strength and direction of the line of best fit. And I, another, I can go into detail in another video for this, but um, briefly, if the R value is close to one or negative one, it means that the linear model uh, strongly reflects the relationship between the variables. If it's close to zero, there's really not much of an association at all. If the line, if this value is positive, it's an indicator that there is a positive correlation. If this if this value is negative, it means there's a negative correlation. And then the final thing is this E1 values. If I plot these, these are our residuals. And what residuals are, it measures the distance between the actual plotted point and the predicted plotted point. So the line that we have here the reason you create a line of best fit is to make predictions. And uh, so the line here is a predicted value and this is the actual value. The residual below this is the difference between the predicted and the actual. And then all of these points are plotted along this. One way to tell if a line measures the data well is to look at a residual plot. And what you wanna look for, something that shows that the data is represented well, is an even amount of points above and below the line. And you want the points to be closely clustered around the x-axis. And in our case, they're pretty close to the x-axis. We have a one, two, three, four above, one, two, three, four, five, six below. 
a one on the line. It's not bad. It's a little imbalanced, but for the most part, pretty good. I'd say that the residuals match this data pretty well. And another way to confirm that is to look at the correlation coefficient. The fact that we're at a 0.92 means that this is a pretty strongly correlated line. The final thing I want to discuss, and this is all kind of recap for um, for those of you that have experienced lines of best fit before. There's two other fancy words, interpolation and extrapolation. If you want to make a prediction, let's say at like this point right here, we have no data at that point, um, but because it, it occurs within our collected range of data, we would call this an interpolation. Now, if we wanted to make a, a prediction outside of our collected data range, let's say this point out here, because this is occurring outside our data range, we call this an extrapolation. And they're considered to be less accurate because we don't know what would happen to that data if we continued to collect it. If we collected some more points, we don't know. Maybe this goes down or maybe it goes up at a steeper rate. A linear model might not even represent the data very well after that point. So interpolations are, are predictions based within the data set, extrapolations are based outside the data set, and they're considered less accurate. Um, I think that's about it. I crammed a lot of information into this video, uh, and I hope that you have a decent recap of what residuals are used for, what the correlation coefficient is used for, and how to use lines of best fit to make predictions. So best of luck on today's assignment, guys. Hope the video helps.